Located in the heart of Churchill, Manitoba, and standing out from the white snowy background is a vibrant Polar Bears International House. The brand new building is a spot where tourists and locals alike can learn more about polar bears in the Interpretive Center and hear from experts during their lecture series. And while the house just opened this season, it's already seen over a thousand people walk through the doors. But it is also a place for scientists to work on important research projects when it comes to protecting polar bears one of which is a polar bear population study. So we set up a long-term uh, study here because there's so much interannual variation that, it's, uh, that disguises what the long-term trends, if they exist, are. And so one of the big focus uh, things has been just what is, sort of fluctuations go on in a polar bear population for perfectly normal, natural reasons. For more than 20 years, Dr. Ian Sterling and his colleagues have been collecting data on polar bear numbers. They conduct this research by using various methods, everything from traditional pen and paper to bear collars. And over the last few decades, one thing has become clear. The polar bear population is on the decline, and according to Dr. Sterling, climate change is the reason why. It was quite a shock in a certain way to, when we suddenly realized that besides the, uh, the movement of population numbers, what we were actually doing was gathering data with which we were to able to actually test the idea that uh, climate warming was in fact having a population level effect. What we've seen in both western Hudson Bay and southern Hudson Bay are declines. Declines in body condition, declines in the actual size of bears, and declines in population. We've been able to tie that directly to sea ice loss. Their polar bear population research has brought to light two main findings. The first is what's happening here in Churchill will happen to other parts of the Arctic. As we see some of these changes in places like the Southern Beaufort Sea or the Barents Sea, as far as changes in body condition and drops in reproduction, it's everything we've learned here in Western Hudson Bay has kind of given us the roadmap of sorts of what climate change is likely to do to polar bears. The second is that there's no plan B for the bears, and if something doesn't change, we could lose more than half the population this century. There's not really very many alternative things that a bear can eat here. It can scavenge a few beluga carcasses maybe, or catch the occasional bearded seal on land, but in an area like this where there are very few alternatives, they're not going to adapt to land. Dr. Sterling is hoping that they can use their research from here in Churchill to get ahead of the problem in other polar bear habitats around the world. He's also hoping that the more people that interact and fall in love with the bears here, the more they will want to help save their lives. In Churchill for the Weather Network, I'm Mia Gordon.